Hey, Coach, hope you're well. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Hey, I'm well, thanks. Obviously, you got a lot of moving pieces coming into the defensive line this year, but you also have a lot of people who have been there before. Um, so my question is kind of like a two-part, but I'm, I'm, what's Taco Charlton giving you? Um, what's, what's he adding to that bulk up front? And then the second part to that is a guy like Breland Speaks, you know, he, he tends to like fly under the radar for a lot of folks because we didn't get to see him last year, but how important is this third year for him? Um, well, you're right. Both of those guys are kind of back into the fold or new to the group. Um, and we got some other guys in that category as well that spent some time injured or are coming to us. But uh, specifically with those two, um, you know, Breland's done a nice job uh, in terms of his rehab, in terms of working post-surgery. Um, he's had some good time in terms of recovery. Um, you know, we'll see, you know, I'm, I've got high expectations for him. Um, I really, you know, the third year I've found over the course of my career, you know, is a year that guys kind of, you know, define themselves in, in a lot of instances, you know? Um, and so hopefully we're, we're going to see that out of Breland. Um, I've got great anticipation and hope for what we're going to see out of him when we can get back on the field and, uh, as far as Taco is concerned, um, we've had him for a couple of weeks. Uh, I would say it's probably a little bit early to make some of those judgments based on not having him, having seen him move around at all or been with him on the field. Uh, he's done a great job in our meeting settings, um, been impressed with his work ethic in terms of trying to learn the system and get up to speed with our vocabulary terminology and on the same page with the, the rest of the group. So we'll see how that goes. You know, look forward to getting him out there and, and seeing what that looks like, to be honest. Let's go to BJ Kissel. Go ahead, BJ. Hey, Coach, appreciate the time. Uh, not to take anything away from any other coach or the way they go about their business, but anyone who's, who's seen you at practice or been up close has seen how you kind of get after it with your guys, just uh, kind of a – a laid back way, just how difficult is this time for you as somebody who likes to get your hands on the guys and the pads and, and get after it in that way? Um, yeah, I would say I'm missing that element of things um, <laughs> for sure. Um, it, but it is what it is, you know, I mean, uh, you, you've got to be able to adapt to change and adapt to the situation. And that's what we tried to do. Um, you know, we, the, the meetings have been really good. I've been pleased with what we've gotten out of them. I think they've been productive. I credit the players for doing a great job in terms of uh, their attention. Um, you know, they've, they've brought some things to the table there. I think it's been uh, engaging as best we can make it. Obviously, it's not the same as being on the field, but uh, we're all working under the same parameters and trying to do the best job that we can with the situation as it's been unfolding. Let's go to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Brendan, thank you for taking some time with us. Um, yeah. I, had, I had a question about a returner and uh, a new guy. Uh, first, a returner, I was just wondering where your communication is at right now with Chris Jones when it comes to his participation. And then for the new guy, Mike Dana, I was curious. You had said that on the call that you texted Matt House, uh, you can't wait to get this guy in the room. So just what jumped out about you about the rookie on tape that, that made you really like? So Jones and Dana, please. Yeah, so, um, you know, I, Chris and I have had a great relationship and I've had a couple of conversations with him over the course of the off season here. Um, you know, I'm not going to get into the details of that. And, and honestly, you know, he's got his contract situation going on. And, uh, you know, I trust that Brett Veach and his staff are handling that side of things. And, and I just kind of leave it there. Um, in terms of Mike Dana, uh, it's been really good to get to know him. I've been impressed with his work ethic. I've been impressed with the way he is uh, studied, the time he's spent on his own, the questions that he's asked, um, you know, give you a, a very good feeling about where he's at and the work that he's putting into this situation. Uh, so I'm excited again to get him on the field and see what that looks like, but um, been really happy with how that's gone so far up to this point. Let's go to Harold Coons. Go ahead, Harold. Hey, Coach. Hope you're in the family. You're doing well, man. Uh, you know, I got a question to kind of along the lines of what BJ was talking about with the virtual training. I know Andy Reid had mentioned sometimes yeah. these guys have been taking some quizzes and, and you just you need to see the eyesight out of them. How do you feel that it's been received from your end, you know, just kind of the teaching and back and forth? And do you feel like they're getting a lot, of, a lot out of it? And then with those rookies, 
uh, especially Mike, you know, how do you feel that they've been able to absorb it? And do you feel it's benefited more with the individual training aspect of it as well? Um, you know what, that's a good question. Um, uh, you know, so in terms of the, the format, um, I would say there's been some challenges, both from a coach's standpoint and preparing things and from a player's standpoint in functioning in that environment, which um, that's good. I think that's invigorating in a lot of ways. And those type of challenges ultimately help you improve. If you don't get out of your comfort zone ever, you know, that you kind of just stay stagnant in doing the same old thing. And I certainly have found that to be the case with um, my preparation for the meetings. You know, it's challenged me to come up with creative things, to keep it interesting, different ways to come at presenting information or quizzing information. And so um, I won't say that it's been easy by any means, um, it, but it has been challenging and, uh, and interesting. And I think the players, yeah, you'd have to ask them. I don't know if they would have that same perception of, of how that's gone or not, but um, you know, it's, it's new, it's different. And I do think there are probably some pieces of it that will probably last even moving forward um, just in terms of teaching. Um, it's been, it's been fun in some elements of it from that regard. Um, the second part of your question, I just totally lost in, in my answer. <laughs> no, I was just saying with the rookies, I know that Andy Reid was mentioning yeah. he wants to see eyesight and there's been possible quizzes and everything. How have you seen that out of, especially Mike? Yeah, it's, you know, there've been some, and, and you get this with every rookie class, you know, you get some separate time with those guys on their own with just the, the young guys. And that's invaluable time. A lot of times they're, uh, they're not willing to jump out there in a group setting and ask questions and admit they don't know things, even though, you know, they don't have it all figured out. And so those individual segments, when you have them are important and you really do get to see a lot more personality out of them, a lot more about who they are in a more relaxed environment. Um, I, both Mike and, and Treshawn Wharton have been fantastic in that, that setting. I've actually, I've, I've really been impressed by those two guys. Um, not, you know, most specifically in their work ethic and the time that they're putting in on their own when we're not actually engaged on a call. That's been one of the biggest impressive elements for those two guys. All right, let's go to Nate Taylor. Go ahead, Nate. Hey, Brendan, thanks uh, for doing this. I also have a, a two questions to ask you. Um, the first is based on just looking at the roster and, and the defensive personnel that's available to you, um, one could argue that this may be the, the most collection that you've had at the defensive line position. So I'm just interested what your thoughts are when you guys get on the field, how that competition is going to really be beneficial to the unit, given that um, you guys could honestly carry, I think, as many as 10 defensive linemen going into a year, uh, which maybe most teams can't say. And then secondly, with the understanding of how going from year one to year two with the system, uh, just what have you noticed about certain veterans on the team, whether it's Chris, Frank, uh, even Derek Nottie to some degree, how much have you understood what those guys are bringing to the meetings because they know who you are and just the relationship that you guys have built over time? Yeah, so uh, to the first part of your question in relative to the roster and the competition, I would say I would agree with you. I think we've got a, a great group. I think we've got quality competition and depth uh, at every position and for each role. Um, I, I would say that's a credit to Brett Veach and Mike Borgonzi and the personnel department, Ryan Poles. Those guys have done a fantastic job in terms of bringing in competition and doing you know, the best that they can to uh, create that type of environment. And in my experience and opinion, that's what makes you better. Um, I don't know how all that's going to play out. You know, the players determine that. Um, I tell each guy that walks in the room, I, I, I can't tell you what your role is going to be. It's going to be defined by you. It's going to be defined by your performance on the field. And when you show us you're capable of doing things at a high level, we're going to try to put you in positions to do that. And we're going to try to minimize the times that we put you in position to do things that you aren't as good at. Um, so we'll see how that plays out. I mean, that's the beauty of it. And that's the thing that I absolutely love about training camp. Um, you know, I've always said that all of this off-season program is important and it's vital, but really it's just preparation and giving you a foundation to show up at training camp and compete. And that's what's going to determine, you know, how the, all that plays out. And I'm, I'm excited to see it, no question. Mm -hmm. um, 
the is, these two part questions are killing me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Refresh me on the second half of yours. <laughs> yeah, it, it's okay. I, I totally understand, uh, given the time constraints. But the second part was veteran guys that you've worked with a year ago now going into yeah. your Derek and Hottie, Frank Clark, Chris Jones, just what about that relationship helps you in this particular setting so that they are ready to sort of prove whatever role they may have in year two under your system? Yeah, well, I would say there's there's a, a good element there in terms of a, one lap around the track and a little bit of familiarity with the calls, the system, the terminology. Um, but I would also say that's still a work in progress. That's one of the things I think we've focused on a lot in these sessions we've been able to have this year, um, both a lot of uh, football IQ elements is what I refer to it as, you know, um, offensive personnel, terminology, backfield sets, formations, um, getting our language more on the same page, where a year ago we were much more concerned about getting the scheme installed in the defense. Um, we focused a little bit more on offensive terminology and pre-snap keys and some of the, the higher level football IQ things, not just understanding what the call is, but maybe a little bit of the why and the reasoning behind why that call is made or what its strengths and weaknesses are. Um, and so I think you can get to those type of things in that second lap around the track, if you will. And uh, guys like Frank Clark and Derek, Chris, they bring a lot of, of knowledge to the table after they've been through things. Um, had some of those guys present some things at times to kind of change it up, to both challenge them and so the group doesn't have to listen to me the whole time. So um, that's been fun. All right, guys, we've got time for a couple more. So let's go Matt, Derek, and then Seren. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, coach, thanks, thanks for your time. Yeah. Uh, you got three guys right now from Michigan with Frank Taco and, and Dana. Um, that's just a coincidence, or is there something with the coaching that you get with those guys? Or and, and, and what similarities do you see amongst those three guys? Yeah, it is. I thought about that the other day, actually. Um, you know, I, I think it is a coincidence, to be honest with you, but there is an element that, uh, you know, that's a good program, and they've had some good coaching there over the course of uh, a period of time. I know Greg Madison was there for a long period of time. He was a very well-respected defensive line and defensive coordinator, very good football coach. Um, so I don't know, maybe he has a common thread there, but uh, I, I think that just kind of, you know, worked out that way. But, uh, you know, excited to work with all three of those guys. I don't know that you can, you know, put your finger on it. I don't know. Maybe they've got some Michigan rituals that they'll bring to the group as we move forward. But um I don't know that we're going to get taken over. We still got some, we got some strong schools represented throughout the room from other spots as well. All right, Seren, you want to go ahead and close it out? Yeah, uh, thank you, Coach, for the uh, time. A um, couple things. Just one, first of all, a lot of length on this defensive line, right? A lot of long guys, and that if you look back through uh, Coach Pagnola's resume, that's obviously kind of a signature trait. So I'm just curious, what is it about the length? Uh, that, 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 you know, uh, what, what are the positives that it brings to it besides the obvious, just being able to get your hands up and, and bat a pass down? And, and is it more difficult to coach? We know football's a game of leverage. And how do you balance it out, uh, you know, making sure you got guys that can play with leverage but also bring whatever the positive traits are with all that length? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so in, in, in my experience, there's, you know, first of all, length is an asset if you use it correctly and you use it well. Um, if you don't use it, then it, it doesn't serve much of a, an advantage. Um, in my opinion, it all comes down to technique and fundamentals. Um, and you're right. There's a lot of, particularly you see young players who've got great size, great length, but their pad level's high. They don't play with great power, great leverage and, and strength, and therefore their length is negated. Um, it can definitely be an advantage in terms of creating separation and extension in the run game and creating operating space to locate ball carriers, um, to get released off of blocks and put offensive blockers in a disadvantaged position. It absolutely is an advantage in pass rush if you use your hands, if you're able to, uh, you know, develop some of the techniques with stabs and long arms to effectively use that length. Um, it's a huge advantage. Uh, that being said, it, it comes back to the technique and fundamentals. And I would argue that there's some 
really good football players that don't have that type of length necessarily that based on their technique and fundamentals play just as effectively as guys that have, you know, longer limbs and, and stature. Coach Daly, we appreciate you joining us. Thanks for your time. Absolutely. Pleasure, guys. I hope everybody's doing well and safe and uh, not going crazy during this element of, of things. Okay.